Hey everyone, welcome back to Astrox. Awesome to see you here again. Today's video is a devlog update on my oper cool operating system Astralexi, which I'm building specifically for the Pika Calc, which is a cool little device which is looks like a calculator but it's actually a retro computer. One if you missed the last two videos, I definitely recommend checking those out first. One dives into Pika Calc itself, what it is and why I think it's such an interesting piece of hardware. And the other lays out the game plan for this whole operating system journey. So if you like context and not just being completely lost, I've got you covered. Alright, enough intro. Grab your favourite debugging snack and let's get into it. So, building an operating system. Not exactly a weekend side project. This isn't something you whip up with a co cup of coffee and a YouTube tutorial on in the background. It's one of those legendary programming challenges, right up there with writing your own compiler or understanding C pointers without crying a little inside. It's deep, it's low level, and it forces you to think like the machine. And not in a cool sci-fi way, more like, why is this register value 0xff and why did my entire system crash after printing hello? But as painful as it can be, it's also really rewarding. I'm aiming to have the first full version of Astralixi out in about two to three months from this video. But today, I want to share where I am at, what's been going well and what hasn't been. Let's great. Let's start with the biggest early challenge, the file system. I'm going in a FAT32 style layout. It's lightweight, it works with SD cards up to two terabytes, and it keeps things compatible with other systems. In theory, that should make life easier. In practice, not so much. Writing a file system from scratch is like deciphering ancient scrolls, but they're in binary and they bite. You miss one offset or misalign one sector, and suddenly your files either vanish or turn into corrupted nonsense. Debugging is the worst part. You're starting at hex dumps for hours, trying to figure out if that 0x20 was supposed to be a space character or or the beginning of file metadata. Right now, I've got a basic read slash write working, but directory handling and file attributes are still buggy. Sometimes it thinks empty folders are full, and other times it just gives up. But we're working on it. Next, the display system. This has been a real headache, mainly because of SPI. If you're not familiar, SPI is a communication protocol that lets the PicoCalc talk to per peripherals, like the display. It uses GPIO pins to send data really fast, but configuring it is delicate. It's one of those things where you change one timing value and suddenly the screen goes from working perfectly to total static. It's like tuning a radio, but with code. And just to keep things interesting, I'm also using SPI to handle keyboard input. So now the OS is juggling two SPI devices at once, both sending data over the same type of bus, but needing different clock speeds, configurations, and error handling. Good times. I had to manually copy a character map from a website that looks like it was built in the Netscape Navigator era. ASCII tables everywhere, which is truly wild. But honestly, moments like these are great teachers. I learned a lot about error tracing, memory protection, and just generally not trusting anything until I've logged it at least six times. Quick shout out to the Clockwork Pi forums. If you're working on a PicoCalc project, definitely check them out. The community in there has been super helpful. Great place to ask questions, share code, and just geek out. I actually met someone who's specifically making a game specifically for Astralixi, which is amazing. That kind of thing gives this whole project more life. If you've got an idea for a mini game, a tool, or just a cool UI skin, come join in. I'd love to see what you build. Also, quick reminder, if you're enjoying this type of content, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, it helps me keep doing this, and apparently over 90% of you watching haven't subscribed yet. Let's fix that, yeah? Okay, back to the nerdy bit, shall we? Looking ahead, I've got a really fun feature I want to experiment with a tiny AI helper for system performance. Now, I don't mean like ChatGPT, but this would be more of a minimal, real-time computer that like, like helps system performance. 
I think it could help keep things snappy, especially when running lightweight games or multitasking. But first, here's what's on my immediate to-do list before the next devlog drops. First, get the first 32 core commands working reliably. Think basic shell, file manipulation and couple utilities. Next is stabilize the display system. Now on the screen, to run 100% glitch free, including under load. And finally, optimize performance to use as little RAM and CPU as possible. Every byte counts when you're on limited hardware. Alright, that's where I'm leaving things today. Kind of an abrupt ending, I know, but hey, think of it like a cliffhanger. Just with more hex codes and fewer explosions. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, yeah I do read all of them, and definitely make sure you subscribe, so you don't miss what's next. Astrolix is just getting started, and there's a ton more coming soon. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll catch you in the next one, hopefully with a fewer bugs and more breakthroughs.